course, I paid someone to do it. In prison, you paid someone to do your laundry? So many great designers went bad. My childhood friend was, you know, a big part of uh, The Wolf of Wall Street. The film was pretty accurate. And I'll say, oh, you see that guy? He's fucking rich. That guy's really rich. And they'd look at me like, you're a nut. So I knew there'd be a day of reckoning. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to more Ryan Saran. Today, we have something incredibly special, sitting down with CEO, innovator, the cobbler himself, yeah. Steve Madden. Yes. Um, he's been doing this a long, long time. He's going to school me uh, as somebody who's been doing this a very, very short time. We're going to get him to, to open up. So let's get into it. 1990, 1100 bucks selling shoes out of your car. You go public three years later, yeah. which is rapid speed. Right. Right. Do a little jail time a little bit later. And now you've built this massive company, huge brand, taking it high. You've had personal lows. And now the company's worth what? $3 billion? Yeah. Yeah. And all of that is true. I did start with $1,100 and uh, it seems implausible now. How do you think of yourself? How does it, how does it feel? I mean, right now we're in your, you're basically Manhattan penthouse. I'm looking out at these massive Central Park views. Yeah. Your company's worth $3 billion yeah. today. How do you feel? You know, I still feel, I don't feel like that I'm that guy, that rich guy, like when people, oh, he's rich. Yeah. I'll still be with like my friends and I'll say, oh, you see that guy? He's fucking rich. That guy's really rich. And they look at me like, you're a nut. You know, they, you're a nut. But I think like that. I don't think of myself in that way, you know? Why did you start your own company? Because you were a salesperson. You were, you were selling shoes. Was it this aspirational was, feeling? Were you entrepreneurial selling, as a little kid? I was, always. I worked for a company in the 80s, and I seemed to have a little knack for making shoes that girls liked, yeah. you know? And then, of course, selling them, which was my real gift. You know, I just knew how to do two things. I knew how to make great shoes, and I knew how to sell them. And I knew that I could, if I could do that, I could figure the rest out. So who was, the, who was that integral hire as you were building I, that a good, did a lot of like, the work? Because you seem like you're, you're the creative, great, you're the innovator. Such a great question. I would not be here without the hires that I made. I mean, we have the CEO now. It's like amazing guy. And we can be crazy and make shoes. And this guy, you know, sort of makes the trains run on time. Is that, do you think, the most important role that you've had since you started the person that makes the trains run on time? It just fits, you yeah. know, because when you have someone like me, then you need someone like that, perhaps. Yeah. The tendency is for people like me to want to control everything. I would bet, and I don't know this, but I would bet that's why Tommy is also successful. Okay. And, you know, is that he had people like that. Yeah. But there are others that have, you know, fallen by the wayside. Maybe. That didn't have great operators. That didn't have great people with them, you know, whatever they were, you know, and um, there's so many, I can, so many great designers went bad. What is your daily focus now? I'm still making shoes, you know. Still I'm designing. Still making, I'm still making shoes, yeah. I'm still thinking about shoes all the time. And the people that you know, I work with is so great that I'm, I, it, my job is actually easier today. Are you wearing your shoes now? I am. I just made these actually. They're really cool. Yeah, I don't know about them. I'm not sure. They're sort of big. I kind of like them a little. My men's shoes are getting better and better all the time. Do you, yeah. only, you only wear your shoes? Actually, I didn't. You know, I was. Um, so you'd wear other people's no, shoes? No, I'm going to tell you, I don't. I was for a long period of time. I only wore a beat up pair of engineer boots. And then my men's shoes got better and better. And now <clears throat> I only wear my shoes. I might sneak in a pair of Gucci loafers. Maybe I have one of them in my closet, you know, but um, may I wear Steve Madden? Our shoes are great. <clears throat> I'm gonna get you a pair. Okay, good. So what advice do you give to, to people looking to start their own business today? You know, it's, 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 it's a lot more expensive than just 1100 you know? bucks. I, I have one piece of advice yeah. that I give. You need to get some reps. You know, you need to like, if you want to be in the shoe business, go work in a shoe store for a year. You know, if you want to be in the clothing business, go work at Zara. You know, they don't do that. People don't do that today. People just want to jump. They right want to be the, the president on the first day. I'm telling you, this is the advice. You want to be go into the restaurant business, go work at fucking Shake Shack. You know what I mean? And they don't do it. And that's a problem. And that's the one thing that I tell, I speak at colleges, 
And I tell them, you know, and that's, I can't think of better advice than that. So the first couple years of the business seems, you know, uh, in hindsight anyway, and probably in real life, like it was just a rocket ship. It still feels that way, you know, but I'm older now. And so, you know, there's other people in the plane. So, so talk you know, to before me. it was just me and a few people. You know. How many people? How many people did you have working with you when when you went public in '93? Yeah, probably twenty. That's it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So walk maybe walk me through that know. time. Walk me through the Wolf of Wall Street days. Yeah. So how, that, that, how that did that was, go down? What how what happened? My childhood friend was you know a big part of uh, the Wolf of Wall Street thing. He was the guy that was played by um, Jonah Hill. Yeah, Donnie Azoff, right? Donnie Azoff, and he came to me, he said, I'll raise you all this money. I never had more than, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars at once. You at know, that and, time? Yeah. And, uh, and so he did. They raised me the money. They raised me millions of dollars. And I got involved with them. And it was, it was, the film was pretty accurate. It really was. It was crazy. But they were very smart guys. And, you know, we all got intoxicated with the quick money. Mm-hmm. I would say that we all did. I was part of it. And Steve Madden was a prop, you know, it was a product for their company. Sure. And it turned out to be the only legitimate deal that they did. Yeah. When they, they did, they took like 35 companies public and mine was the only one that I think is still here. I think, I'm not sure. But being exposed to such quick money, you know, when you're young and, you know, you, you just freaks the brain out. How much, how much, like, how much well, are we you know, about I mean, you? it's all relative, but you know, you would, you know, just like, you know, all of a sudden you could make like, you know, 75,000 in an afternoon. That's crazy, you know, and, and those guys were making millions on the deals. It was like, holy smokes, you know, and the houses keep getting bigger and the, you know, that it just, it was just crazy. The, when did you, um, when did you realize there was a problem? No, I knew, I, I knew instinctively that, you know, at first you kid yourself that, that, you know, it's, a gray area and all that, you know, but I knew that the money was too easy. Got it. So I knew there'd be a day of reckoning. Did you ever have tough days? You know, when you were running the business and all those employees and you're trying to grow and Outside things are messy. Fact, yeah. When I knew I was going to prison, that was a tough day. Do you remember like, that Who's day? Who's going to make my bed? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do. That was tough. That was tough. And you start thinking of things like that, actually. It's so funny. How'd you separate? Like, how am I going to do the laundry? What am I going to do? I never did laundry in my life. I never did it. I don't know how to do it. Of course, I paid someone to do it. <laughs> in prison, you paid someone to oh, do yes. your laundry? Yes. My friend Flavio. He did it for a mackerel. He did my laundry. A mackerel? Yeah. Shout out to Flavio, wherever you are. Lovely guy. For doing your laundry. Yeah. And he also used to make flan. <laughs> he used to be friends with the Spanish guys. And... Uh, he made flan in a microwave. It was brilliant. It was absolutely the most brilliant thing you've ever seen. In prison. Flan in prison. It's the next title of our next book. <laughs> I'm sure it was scary, though. Like, it wasn't awful. as scary as you think. It was awful. Yeah. It's awful to be away from your family. Uh, and, you know, I didn't have the kids then. They came after prison. But, you know, my mom and and stuff like that, and your friends, and all of that. You know, that's awful. Mm-hmm. It wasn't scary. You kind of just survive, you know? It's not scary. You know, after a day, it's not scary. It's awful. Yeah. But scary isn't a word I would use. You know, you're just kind of like, okay, let's go. Get in the car. Let's ride. That kind of thing. How did you, like, how do you, you're such a positive guy. Like, you're in prison. How do you how do you keep yourself uplifted? Well, you got to. That's a good question. I mean, you got to keep your mind going and your body going and your spirit going. Reading, writing, exercise. How do you separate the personal of that moment and I have this massive business? You don't think about the business. You're just thinking about surviving. And then the day you got out, you went right to the office. <laughs> I did. I did. I went to work pretty quick. I had some sushi on a day. <laughs> I don't know why I had sushi. Is that what your craving was? The biggest I, one? I guess. What was the process like of writing The Cobbler, of writing your book, and putting oh, everything you know out what? there? I'm supposed to promote The Cobbler. Yeah, we know we are now. It's a paperback. It's coming out. It's a great read. Yeah. It's very simple. It's a really great book. 
No, it, it is. Yeah, it's a really great book. So, you know, just kind of telling my story, you know, before I can't, before I forget. <laughs> so I'm getting close to that now. Was there, because you're super vulnerable in the book, right? You ah, get, you're yeah. very, very honest. Yeah. Was that uncomfortable for you? No. Especially with the family now? Well, maybe, maybe when I read it and I did the audio, it was like, ooh, why did I say that? I remember I was talking about some, a girlfriend 30 years ago, and I was like, ooh. Why did I say that? So, I mean, you go from the highs to lows. You talk about because, addiction. Because the truth is never boring. And it's so much easier to tell the truth. And it's so much more interesting. It's interesting to tell the truth, yeah. actually, is what I really mean. And, uh, and I, you know, rather than trying to be interesting or trying to be clever, you know, if you just, all you have to do is tell the truth. And it's like, oh, that's clever. That's interesting. I swear that's true. That is, that has been my experience. Well, everyone should get the book. It is a great read. Yes, it's a good one. Yes. Well, the last thing I want to do is I'd love for you to show me your your wall in your den here. Oh, you like that one? Yeah, because you have like a shoes and stuff and fun things. Oh, I Can thought you... you're talking about that little piece of art. More prose is needed. What does it say? Oh, I like that too. My poetry. But it seems like there's a lot of history on the wall in your den. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do leave random shoes around the house. This, what is, is this that? like the original shoe? No, I bought it in an antique store. You just like it? I just it love clogs. I, I wore clogs when I was 20. You know, a lot of it's just shoes, you know. This was a great shoe of mine. That this one? Was one of my biggest shoes. This was like... Oh yeah. I don't even it's a huge... Like, I, I feel like... I've How did I make that? The ads of these. 22 years ago, 23 years ago, I made this shoe. It's called the Bobby. The body. Does that one go in the museums? This one will go in. That was a great one. Because they said I couldn't make sneakers, and I did. This is a good picture. Which one? Through my three heroes in one picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Mick, Mick Andy Warhol. Warhol, and William Burroughs. Do you ever go out on this balcony? Do you ever just go out there and, like, look at the city? I did during COVID when they used to beat those pots and pans. I oh, could you, you could hear them all out here? I would go out with the pots and pans. It's like your, your yeah. view is yeah. just crazy. And then I'll let you go. Good. Yeah. It's a lot of real yeah, estate. Isn't this fantastic? Us. Look at this. Holy smokes, on top of the world, Ma. 